Mother's Day morning, she woke me at four in the morning and said my leg is turning blue. And we went right to the ER and they admitted her. I miss her with my entire heart. With her being on the, not being on the court, um, we, I always imagined my senior year with her. Marissa Olin-Wine has only known a life immersed in sports. I started playing soccer around five, I think, um, and then I played basketball around like second grade. Her days as an athlete started like so many others. The first soccer tournament soon followed by her first trophy and later more hardware as part of the Parkland varsity basketball and soccer teams. She brought everything, athleticism, strength, power, speed, uh, a vocal leader led by example. Um, so she was someone that people emulated and wanted to follow. She was someone we kind of targeted early uh, as being a really good athlete, somebody who could, um, you know, be a point guard for us down the road. We, we, we just didn't realize down the road would be her sophomore year. The same was true on the soccer field where Mo's senior year was scheduled to begin this past fall, but first came some strange symptoms at a spring tournament. I just like couldn't breathe. Um, I could go in for like five minutes at a time. I would come out and then I, I would be like, you know, just very fatigued in my legs. They did a lot of tests. Everything came back normal. They did a lot of COVID tests. Everything came back normal. Perhaps asthma, thought her doctor, who prescribed an inhaler, when in fact the presumed healthy 17-year-old was experiencing a life-threatening medical emergency. I was in the ER room and they came back with all the blood tests and then my ultrasound tests and they said that I had a blood clot. Deep vein thrombosis and she had pulmonary embolisms in both of her lungs. It had broken off substantial blood clots in both of her lungs. And we're like, how did this happen? With clots running nearly the length of her torso, Mo was admitted to the pediatric ICU, undergoing three intense surgeries. They put a stent in her leg. She was on blood thinners. She was in a lot of pain. Her leg swelled up. It was like twice the size of her other leg. I was in a lot of pain beforehand because I couldn't, I couldn't walk really on the one leg. Um, so, but it was worse after I got my stent in because it's like, it's foreign to your body. So it's like, you don't know if your body's gonna accept it. They didn't even know if my body was gonna accept it. With three months to go until preseason soccer, Mo slowly but surely regained mobility. The rising senior determined to be back on track by August, enlisting the help of athletic trainer Hannah Dalmas. We started doing some basic like jogging. I know Mo absolutely hates running, so I tried to come up with little drills to kind of get her cardiovascular up. We were doing drills on the ladders. We were running around the field. I was doing like a whole bunch of plyometrics and all that. Um, and I was doing it. I was obviously like tired and stuff like that and fatigued, but I just figured like I was just way out of shape. Potentially normal, though Dalmas had concerns, Mo expressed at her next appointment just one week before school started. The senior anxious to get the green light for soccer, but instead came more bad news. She was like, I, I don't see any blood flow. And then she sent me right to the ER. And he's like, your stent is blocked. Like that whole clot is still there. So she went into surgery again, three times. The first time they couldn't get it open. Second time was also a failure. And then the third time took four hours. He went through my um, neck and my um, knee and tried to hit it from both sides. And then he finally got through. So it was back to square one, more medications, rehab, and questions about her future as an athlete. Mo sidelined for the second time in five months indefinitely. It was very difficult for us. And then she was very depressed and that was the hardest thing. My whole motivation was that I was gonna be able to get back because that's what the hematologist had said and like almost promised me that he like believed that I could get back. So when I lost that, it was really hard because it's like you're, you're taking like the biggest thing out of a, a kid's life. Like what is there for them to really look forward to?